We know that now the crackdown seems to have subsided a little bit, but how much of your call is to do with just transparency and clarity on what the leadership will do with these businesses? Thank you for having me back. Um, as I've uh, mentioned before, Dalton invests one company at a time, and we look to invest in companies that are good businesses that uh, we can purchase with a margin of safety run by entrepreneurs whose interests are aligned with shareholders. And because of those requirements, we find it very difficult, we have found it very difficult to invest in China. Um, most recently, because of the declines towards the end of the year, there were opportunities to invest in some non essential key strategic types of companies, such as clothing fashion companies. Um, and then because of the huge rise in prices, uh, we're out of China again. So the issues we have with China have to do with um, the fact that uh, there's there's very little alignment of interest. More and more companies are becoming nationalized. They're acting as SOEs. And entrepreneurs are being punished for speaking out. Um, uh, and I would say creativity is being dampened. Those things make it very hard for us to invest in China. Furthermore, at this point in time, we believe there are headwinds. So firstly, we will see a huge uh, increase in personal consumption because it's uh, now free from three years of COVID. Uh, but the problem is that you'll have limited spending in investments right. and China exporters are facing a slowdown in economic um, conditions abroad. The difficulties in emerging markets and, and investing in AM is now front and center when it comes to India. And I know you still like India as a broader market. What are you taking away from still now the ongoing Adani crisis, which is now going into a third week? We still like India very much. The uh, infrastructure in India, um, in terms of uh, its um, very young population, it's uh, very low per capita GDP. Uh, and just the ongoing improvements we've seen since the economy basically opened in the early 90s is very encouraging. Um, with the Adani uh, crisis, if you like, uh, we're reminded once again that India is a developing country and that controls are not mature and regulations are not complete. They're never complete in any country, even a developed country, but they're particularly wanting in uh, developing countries. Uh, with regards to Adani specifically, the Adani group specifically, um, it's clearly important, very important to the country because the operating businesses um, are so widespread. And, uh, you know, our belief is that the government will take whatever steps are necessary to stabilize the situation, make sure the operating entities are working, and position the party in the best possible position for the elections next year. That's the goal. As far as investing in the Adani Group, it's not a group we would invest in because it's over leveraged uh, and the transparency is not great. Um, and frankly, the domestic private banks in India have not invested in the Adani Group. The last year's um, uh, uh, purchase of um, the cement business from Hold, the Hold, Wholesome Group, for instance, was financed entirely from um, foreign banks, a consortium of banks from all over the world, including ASEAN banks, but no Indian private sector banks. So, you know, the Adani Group is known to be leveraged and known to take uh, edgy risks. There is this broader view that what's going on with Adani, the fears of contagion and spillover is giving rise to perhaps a bit of a reality check when it comes to the you know, some would say perhaps the frothiness that we have seen when it comes to enthusiasm in, in Indian markets. Do you see that or how are you navigating that to uh, to look for some of the more constructive opportunities that you do still see and what are they? So um, it, it's uh, the problem with the Indian market that uh, most people complain about is that it's just not cheap enough. So the best companies in India are great companies. They compound profits and returns that, you know, in the 20s for decades is really quite remarkable. They're some of the best, most profitable companies in the world. Um, so the issue is how to buy, invest in India at a reasonable rate so that um, you can build in a margin of safety. So what we've done is we've looked to invest in smaller companies that aren't as well covered and not as well known. So for example, uh, given the fears of contagion to the private sector, to the private banks, um, we invest in companies like ICICI Bank, which has almost no exposure to the United Group and has uh, more than a 15% uh, tier one uh, capital ratio and has more than 130% coverage of its non-performing loans mm. and its compounding uh, earnings at about 20%. Right. So there are options right. like that right. that I think are very attractive.